Ghost of Shepherd's Town was a really incredible experience. And uh, here's the three of us. <laughs> um, really great guys. Nick said to me when we were filming the show, he was like, you know, you're an engineer, why don't you build me something? And I thought to myself, oh my god, like, why haven't I built anything? All this time, for like the past six years, I've been investigating, and I haven't made a single piece of equipment. Fall comes around, he contacts me and says, you know, I have this uh, episode coming up. Uh, we're going to Franklin Castle. And I really want to communicate with the child spirits of that location. Can you make me something? And in my mind, I was like, yeah. And for some reason, I, I thought of like a jack in a box, an old, creepy, haunted location. I don't know why my mind went there. But I started off with just a very simple box. <coughs> and that's kind of how Ghostly Gadgets was born. I actually experimented with capacitive sensing. So when anything came in the vicinity of one of the corners that was different than the dielectric of air, it would actually trigger an audio response. This one was the second one I made. It's a sensing digital recorder. There's two modes of operation. One, you could just do regular recording mode. And the second one is there's several sensors in the box itself. My idea was that you could put it in a room and then walk away and come back later and maybe see if something happens. Um, if something passes over the box, if there's a change um, in the atmosphere, whether it be temperature, humidity, or barometric pressure, or something like that, or if there's some sort of EMF spike, the device will start recording on its own, and then when you come back later, the LEDs will be blinking red if a message was left for you. <laughs> and then you can play it back. So this was the, like, the beginning stages of my journey into the technical aspect of it. Where are we going from here in the paranormal? Like, what does the community really need? So a desire to advance the field beyond its fringe nature is my number one drive when it comes to this stuff. Uh, a lot of that derives from my anger and frustration when I have people at work, you know, question me constantly about, you know, the science to back it up and stuff like that. And I was really, I really, this past year, I've been on a mission to try and validate our experiences, or, because they're very subjective experiences, but to validate them so people take this field very seriously. I'm gonna show you an example of what I mean. So three days a week, I work part-time now. I work at Sparkfun Electronics, a very great tech company, open source, I love open source, I think it's great. Um, it's something I would love to bring into the paranormal community, especially in terms of technology. This way, you know, if I make a device and I build it, you will be supplied the code, you'll know everything that's inside the box, you'll be able to change it, manipulate it, and do what you want to customize it. Because I feel like a lot of, you know, we always talk about para-unity and the community and stuff like that, but I feel like sometimes it's just lost. Everyone is like, my, my, my. But I really think to move forward, we can all get to a place where we're really making leaps and bounds in this field to be taken seriously. So this is a good example of what I'm trying to combat with these people. So, this is uh, according to Pete. Pete's actually my boss. When I came to Spark Fun, I did not know that he was into ghosts. Very much into it. He would secretly come into my office and be like, Elizabeth, so you know, I have this idea. And that's what this turned out to be. This is actually a coil that he made that's tuned to 60 hertz. And he thought that maybe um, he'd be able to use it as an EV. EVP pickup coil. And I was like, yeah, well, maybe not. But I think it's interesting that you can hook up this coil to a speaker and you can walk around and you can hear all the electronic junk in the air and you can probably use it as a debunker tool because it's letting you know about all the things that could be possibly affecting your equipment that's in the air that we don't normally hear. I thought it was a great idea. We did a video on it. And these were the comments. This has to be a joke, right? I'm confused. You guys are engineers. You're smart. What? Why? <laughs> smart tech people believe in this complete and utter crap. Seriously. The problem with EVP is there is not a lot of science behind it. That is an understatement. That's something I said in the video, because it is a problem. <laughs> you can get away with this around Halloween, but seriously, 
previously over 100 years of zero credible evidence and people going out with pre crappy overpriced ghost hunting fear claiming they're doing science? There's no science because nothing is reproducible. <laughs> I love challenges. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I came across this quote the other day and I thought it was fantastic. Pseudoscience seeks confirmations and science seeks falsifications. That's all we're looking for. We're looking to get to this place where we can confirm on a consistent basis that there is something else. Whatever that something else is, I feel like the more I learn, the more I realize, you know, I, I don't know anything at all. And it could, it could be so many different things, but I want to figure it out. And I think that we can get there.